I've been ready for a long time. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I'm an order married name. So it. Welcome, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you for coming to the Elizabeth City Schools <laughs> April School Board meeting. I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around the fact it is April. Uh, uh, Mr. Fleming and I were at Elizabethan High School today, and uh, teachers have a certain gleam in their eyes when it's getting close to the end of the school year. The only thing people look more happy are your students. Uh, so anyway, very happy you're here. If everybody would stand, uh, Dr. Gardenauer is going to lead us in a moment of silence and pledge the flag. All right, that's power heads for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Time for citizens to speak in accordance with Board Policy 1.404. Anyone wishing to address the board, please come forward, state your name and address. Seeing none, it's time to move to approve the consent and regular agenda. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the agenda? Item on the floor is to approve consent and regular agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. I would want to say about our recognitions that we will uh, be recognizing the girls' basketball team. They took a rain check on this evening, and we are also going to uh, look at our students and recognize them for making a 30 or higher on the ACT. But a lot of our students this evening are at the band concert, and so we, uh, those students, a lot would be involved. So we made a, a decision to go ahead and move those recognitions to uh, next month, as well as uh, Kelsey McCamey. We did want to say uh, one thing about Mr. Harvell, uh, who has passed here recently. He was a, a, a fine gentleman, principal at the high school, fine community member. Uh, I have spent some time this week reading a book of his. Uh, that he wrote and Miss Armstrong brought by for me and so we just didn't want to let this evening go without saying something uh, uh, positive about that and the fact that we're thinking about their family and also Greg Pierce um, uh, was a brother of one of our um, uh, faculty members who had passed this week he also graduated uh, we were in school with him as well so, okay. so here we go. I would recommend Dr. Harville's book for for all of us. It's it, a wonderful story, amazing is. story. It really is. Um, yeah. Okay. I wanted to say thank you to the board, uh, number one, to start the superintendent update uh, for sending me the TSBA training. I went to an employment law seminar. It was very helpful. Uh, they went over EEOC complaints. They talked a lot about uh, what we're need, needing to look forward to as far as licensure and loopholes uh, and employment law. And so we're trying to look at that in light of um, how we do FMLA and, and other issues. So it was very helpful. So thanks for the uh, opportunity to go to that. Um, wanted to mention this evening that um, our 3% goals that we've had all year that we've been communicating to staff, we received our most recent benchmarks, uh, Ms. Marcia Taylor and Anna Hurley. Uh, are helping us with that as well as Libby Post and uh, we are really moving uh, forward. We've had teachers make as much as 13 percent uh, points gain from where they were. Uh, we've had some teachers make one or two points but we're working on our weak areas and we're accentuating our strong areas but overall I think that we're going to get close to meeting that so we're we're very uh, enthused uh, by our benchmark scores. I want to give you an update on uh, the music room uh, band room uh, we are right now in the process of value engineering we've we've been through that process now for uh, a period of time uh, we looked at the controlled estimates and uh, we were poised to start moving forward with that we felt that 
we were ready to go, but we're we've taken a little different approach. We looked at saying, okay, we we have controlled estimates. We wanted to make sure that we were able to come in close to budget before we started anything. And we've been, we're getting closer to that. Uh, we're getting to the point where we're ready to put it out for bid. I know we've been talking about that for the last uh, several months, but we feel that we are now have a project <coughs> that we can move forward with. And so we're, we're happy to do that. And we talked with the construction company today, GRC, and we also talked with Mr. Weems late this afternoon. And uh, they feel that we're, we're almost ready to get ready and do that. So we're, we're very excited about uh, the possibility of moving forward that with phase one, which will be the new construction, and phase two, which will be the classroom uh, renovation. Um, we will be looking at those numbers, and when we bring something to the board, it's going to be a realistic view of what we're going to be able to complete and then look at the uh, <clears throat> time frame with which we're going to be able to move forward. So, And when we do bring that, we hope it's going to be very close to what we're going to be able to complete. Um, Mr. Van has prepared uh, some packets for you on fundraising, and you probably pick those up on your way out this evening. Uh, those, our fundraising efforts have, have gone very well. I'm glad to see Mr. Taylor here this evening because he uh, is one of our visits that we've made, and it was a very positive visit with him. And we're, we're trying to make sure that we talk to a lot of the people in the community to make sure that they have a part to be a part of this community project. And uh, we feel like this will be a big draw for people for 70 or 100 years. And so, um, but uh, he's just an example of someone we thank for him for being here this evening. But we have talked to lots of different businesses and individuals uh, this week, especially I've had several visits. But Mr. Van Huss and I have been beating the concrete and uh, being the pavement, getting out and taking those uh, materials to people. But if it, in the public this evening, if you have any questions about our fundraising efforts or you want to make a donation to the stadium or the Music Room Band Room Project, we would love to uh, uh, have you um, come and sit with us and talk about what we're doing. We think it's really special. So, um, But we're happy about that. Um, I sent to all the board members the copier information to give you an update on where we are. My recommendation at this point will be that we probably move ahead with our TA Duggar copiers. Um, we've received a couple quotes and the buy-in on those is around $130,000 to start and we simply, our budget-wise, uh, we're probably not prepared to take that big of a hit all at one time. But they both have recommended that we probably go ahead and move through our leases that we currently have, move those to uh, we may be one or two years, and the buyout on the, the leases will be much less. And then we'll be able to uh, maybe afford to do the buy-in at that point on a, a copier contract. So I think that's probably prudent at this point based on what we have. I wanted to uh, talk with the board also about the Health Insurance Committee. Uh, we're going to start forming a committee just to look at how we are uh, competitively looking at health insurance uh, for the staff. Uh, we're not planning to go away from the state uh, the state plan, uh, but we are going to look at some other options uh, to see if we can have better, more competitive health care for our people and have more options for them. Uh, this is not, it's going to be a voluntary uh, thing, but we just want to have a committee look at it and see if it's feasible. And so Ms. Wilson is going to help uh, me, and we're going to uh, try to find different people to serve on the committee that are in lots of different situations in life, different, uh, you know, maybe some have children, some do not, uh, and that type of thing to make sure that uh, we have that. So we'll be forming that committee, and we hope to uh, have some options maybe for this coming school year. Uh, so we talked about that yesterday and met with an insurance provider about some different opportunities there. Lastly, I know this is a long list tonight, but lastly, I'll, we have brought before the board telemedicine, and it looked to be a very good program. Um, we, we felt that as it was advertised at the beginning, we felt that it was very, a very good opportunity for our children. We received an MOU, and we've been uh, working with our attorney over the last two weeks trying to hammer out some of the details. What's an MOU? 
that's a memorandum of understanding between the two parties. Um, what Ms. Owen has told us is that by us becoming uh, a, an entity with health care, we would have to abide by all the rules and regulations as a normal health care provider would. So if you can imagine if we had a health care organization like Mount States Health Alliance, um, we would have to follow everything, have our staff trained and prepped the same way. Uh, it's not really the same as what we were sold in the beginning. So. Uh, she feels the MOU at this point is restrictive to the point that we would have to carry a large amount of liability insurance and malpractice insurance to be able to do it, and it would be cost prohibitive for us. And so um, she felt in working on that that uh, also we would be in a, a dual party or tri party employment situation where we would not have control um, possibly over the situation if some, something went wrong. It also had a binding arbitration agreement, which means that we would have to go to Memphis to uh, be in a, a binding arbitration if there was an issue or a complaint that was made or a grievance. For all of those reasons, uh, you know, my recommendation to the board is that if we want to continue looking at a telemedicine option, that this probably is not a good course of action for us with this particular company, given the memorandum of understanding that's going to be in front of us that's been passed to us. So. Um, I can give you a copy of with all my notes from the conversations I've had with our attorneys. And if you would like to table that and maybe think about that next month, uh, we could do that. But my recommendation was there, there were somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 issues um, in the memorandum of understanding so that she had issues and questions with. Um, she did speak with uh, the telemedicine company. Um, <clears throat> and I told her to please wait until I felt the board was informed before we could uh, look at moving forward. So um, you're welcome to look at that, and we could talk about this month and you know look at that for next month if you'd like to. So are there other local districts that are involved in this that you could talk to? There are uh, local mm -hmm. districts as far as Carter County is involved. Um, okay. I, I do not know what advice they've sought from their attorney mm -hmm. or their, their comfort level with that, but I, I just felt that just the malpractice insurance and that type of thing alone was going to be cost prohibitive. But I, I think there probably are other companies that do it, and I'm willing to research and try to see if there are any other opportunities out there if you would like me to. For clarification, Ms. Peters, I, we believe that the uh, memorandum of understanding that Carter County entered to was with the original company where we had the presentation. Um, we do not know for certain that the company that we would be entering into this agreement with now is the same one that Carter County would be currently using. We're not sure about that. And one additional um, cost, in addition to what Dr. Gardner had said that. Um, <coughs> would be required of us would be from the technology side, which would be an extra added cost to us because we have to do certain things uh, to upgrade bandwidth and security features and that sort of thing. So that would be an added cost to the system as well. I, I think it's a great idea. I think that the fact that they were bought out by a different company and, and the time frame that we were looking at, it's just it just warrants more uh, caution anyway with what we're doing. Our attorney felt the same way. So, But, but there are other companies to consider and look into. Uh, Ms. Owen has worked on other memorandum of understandings that are with Williamson County and others in Tennessee and they they do have one memorandum of understanding that are more in line with what I think that the first company had that's far less restrictive, and they really take a lot more of the ownership with the the actual uh, running of the clinic and, and those types of things, and does not require them to carry the same amount of insurance. So uh, I think that that could be an avenue for us to get started and look um, other places. So. All right, are we ready for the personnel update? New hire, Jessica Hayes, EHS science teacher, effective 3 15 Joshua Smith, Lifeguard and Community Involvement Program, effective 4414. 
Rachel Smith, Aaron Westside, first grade teacher, effective 4 2015. William Ryder, interim TA Duggar Social Studies teacher, effective 4 6 15. Resignation, Angie Barker, TA Duggar, head volleyball coach, effective 3 17 15. Faith Stewart, substitute ESP child care worker, effective 3 26 15. Logan Baker, EHS part time assistant to teacher, effective 5 22 14. Laura Beth Fair, Westside teacher, effective 5 25 15. Andrew Googe, TA Duggar, effective uh, teacher, sorry, effective 5 25 15. Leave of absence, DA Bradshaw, uh, extension from 3 18 15 to 5 21 15. Cheryl Pitts, Westside guidance counselor from 3 27 15 to 4 10 15. Andrew Andes, Eastside, assistant to the teacher, effective 4 13 15 to 4 30 15. Evie La Follette, EHS teacher from 4-20-15 to 5-25-15. Retirement, Serena Little, EHS librarian, effective 5-26-15. Ann Rogers, EHS counselor, effective 6-30-15. Uh, Dismissal, Jacqueline Edmondson, substitute bus driver, effective 3-18-15. Azure Googe, TA Duggar assistant to the teacher, effective 3-24-15. Joyce McGrath, EHS custodian, effective uh, 4815. And that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, any reports by any board members or staff? Anybody go anywhere interesting? Can I, just to go back and clarify something from your report, mm -hmm. can we get a regular update on fundraising, the fundraising effort? I'm not saying a formal presentation in the meeting, mm -hmm. but maybe something just. So we know how to comp comment in the public. Well, mm -hmm. this the funds have come in have been in this in this range. I, I think that what we'll do, if if you're okay with this, we will report fundraising efforts that we've actually landed. I think that if we're people that we've contacted right. or talked to, I think that it would be you know they may feel pressure if we're announcing that public. So if if it's okay if we just ones that we've received actual be, funding from. No, I think that'd be great. And the way we'd like to do that is when we do receive funds, we'd like to bring them right here and recognize them you know, in front of you know, the camera and let them be out publicized in the public. So, but if if you would like to see who we visited, and I, I sure would. I mean, I'm be really not even concerned about names as much as here's where we are on the bricks, here's where, here's where we're on the you know that kind of. We can we can certainly do that for you, no problem. Yeah. Dr. Gardner, I mean, I was wondering if this was a, an appropriate time to talk a little bit about the report we received on the stadium, the costs. Is this an appropriate time? That's that's fine. Go ahead. You want me to talk to Mr. Van Hus? Come on, Mr. Van Hus. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to report. I was just looking through this lengthy report here, and um, I was wondering, we went through and approved um, a motion about the income ta um, income hello that's sales tax yes ma'am are there parameters to where certain things only can be in that group or can you enlarge that I mean can you include masonry or metal or anything like that can you expand that we sure can and I think that <clears throat> excuse me GRC has has tried to do that as mm -hmm. much as they can I think there's a whole host list I don't have the list in front of me but I think there are a whole host of things. And I think even when we originally talked about this, we thought maybe the ceiling would be about thirty thousand dollars in savings, and I mm -hmm. think we're we've already exceeded that. So yeah, yeah we've That's received. Wonderful. There's I know we received several different things from General Shell, and there there are a host of groups that they're doing that. They're doing everything from uh, some plumbing equipment. Miss mm -hmm. um, Wilson, her staff have filled out several uh, different. Uh, credit applications with companies since we're buying it directly so mm -hmm. so it has expanded to you know maybe down not to every little item but bulk items that it kind of makes sense on mm -hmm. we've we've definitely done that so what, there aren't definite parameters you can use you can do this but you can't do that there, there aren't any parameters other than the fact that sometimes some of those items are the timing nature mm -hmm. maybe they need you know three more tubes of caulk so they run to you know, they may go to Lowe's to do that rather than go through the process with us. But all those large ticket items where there's, you know, several thousand dollars worth of, of product and or savings, then they've definitely tried to do that. Mm -hmm. The only other question I had was on 
page one of two on this continuation sheet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's a couple items in here that are pretty close to budget. Earthwork erosion controls at 87 percent, mm -hmm. but your the water distribution is is uh, 38 percent over budget. I mean, if you go over budget on some areas, mm -hmm. are we under budget on some others? Yes, ma'am. And I asked that same question because I was concerned that if you looked at an item that said it's at 100 percent, 106 percent funding, what that means. And what Mr. Weems and GRC explained to me was that just to break down the way that things have to be paid, that sometimes it'll show up in one category, but it won't show up. There'll be a deficit in another fund. So he, he assured me that, that that all comes out in the wash is the way that he explained that to me. So I have that same question. So Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Van Hose, uh, before you sit down, <laughs> before you go to your seat. Sure. Refresh my memory. We had an email about the baseball uh, plans, future plans. Can you refresh my memory? Yes. Uh, we the original proposal was to take down the light poles that were on the side of the stadium. Now, right. take those fixtures and light poles down, and then set those back up on the fields at T.A. Dugger. The issue was as they were taking those light poles down they are so old they really weren't in any shape to take down and put back up in that location. So we've kind of had to punt, for lack of a better word, on exactly what to do there. So the administration feels at this point in time we certainly don't want to step out and bring to the board yet another project when we have these others we're trying to complete, although we are committed to finishing that as well because that's what we said we would do. But we're working with some people in the community maybe trying to find some ways to maybe have some poles donated, maybe some laid, uh, labor to erect those poles and, and do some of the work for us. So it kind of threw a wrench in the works when the poles weren't in shape to, to reinstall back at T.A. Duggar. The lights are in shape, but the poles aren't. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And we've, uh, in talking with Mr. Trent, uh, when we salvaged all those items, we probably salvaged anywhere from twenty to $25,000 worth of light fixtures, wiring, and things like that that we feel we can use again. So, so it was worth it was worthwhile in that aspect. We have we can reuse those items. And currently, Mr. Weems is working with uh, Musco Lighting, which which is the company that are, that uh, we've purchased the lights for the stadium. They will do a free analysis on the light fixtures that we have and the fields at T.A. Duggar, and they'll give us a plan as to what would be required to put those back there. So, was there some discussion of using Joel Bryan Field also, or yes, is um, we we the high school has used Joe Bryan Field for oh gosh I don't, I guess ever. ever since it's been there yes ever. and so uh, as a playing facility yeah yes sir right. in the last I think last year there were four high school games played on the baseball field there at the high school. Uh, I think two JV games and maybe two freshman games. So, so no varsity? No varsity, no. There's never been a varsity game on that campus. Okay. Um, and, you know, w when we looked at, the whole idea was to keep that facility and maybe one day have something nice to maybe play a home game on. But the reality is how much money would we have to invest to have a facility as nice as the one that's at Joe O'Brien? And it it really just doesn't make financial sense to even – you know, consider that at this point in time. But Park and Rec, they've been wonderful to work with, and Coach Wilson went and, and spoke with them on the front end of this to make sure that they were comfortable with the playing. And, of course, they had some things. They obviously want to try to limit the play because, you know, fields need time to regenerate and do things like that. So uh, they've spoken with the baseball coaches, and there's a, you know, there's a partnership there is the best way to describe that on the use, appropriate use of that facility as well. Okay. I don't know too many baseball players who haven't enjoyed being able to play on a, you yeah. know, a field like that. It's very nice. Yeah. And again, what was lost? Those the field at the high school. It was what it was mainly used for was the junior high, and since we have a field there now, it, and for all practical purposes, there was really no use for that field uh, there, other than there there was a summer league that played there, but we're allowing them to play at the field at T. A. Duggar. It will hamper them because, we, you know, we, there's a potential we won't have lots there this summer. Uh, however, you know, again, we've worked with them and told them that we're committed to trying to get to that to that point maybe for the next season. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, please tell Mr. Trent again thank you for 
from all the seniors who swim at the pool that you yes. raise the water temperature yes. of the pool. They're coming back now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? All right. Let's move to the regular agenda. Uh, first item uh, is to approve the affiliate agreement between East Tennessee State University and Elizabethan <clears throat> City Schools for a term of one year commencing on July 31st, 2015 and shall automatically renew for four additional one-year periods for a maximum of five years. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you. Have a second? Second. Uh, we are so very fortunate to have East Tennessee State University in our backyard and uh, they do supply uh, student teachers and intern teachers to us and uh, we're just very excited that uh, we get to do it for much longer. We're, we're very fortunate to have uh, a feeding, uh, you know, they feed into our school system and come and we get an opportunity to look at those teachers as a possibility for um, staff uh, decisions in the future. So we certainly would hope that you would approve this for us. Do I have any questions? All right. Item on the floor is to approve interim affiliate agreement between East Tennessee State University <coughs> and Elizabethan City Schools for a term of one year commencing on July 31st, 2015 and shall automatically renew for a four additional one-year periods for a maximum of five years. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next is approve adjusting the ECS tuition and fee schedules for the 2015-2016 school year. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. We have proposed a tuition uh, increase uh, in certain areas. Uh, of about a hundred dollars and we want to make sure that the board knows that all the money generated from this is going to go uh, be divvied out to the schools for instructional materials uh, and supplies that they need. Uh, we are so hoping to be able to uh, take some students in at the high school. We did not raise that and that's uh, going to be a uh, something that we want to do uh, there very soon. So. Uh, it will stay at $300. The elementary will raise from seven to 800 and the junior high from uh, three to 400. I will tell you that it's been quite some time and we've even reduced our tuition in the past uh, during the enrollment enhancement phase of our capital projects. But uh, we're, we're at a point now that we feel that we're, we've kind of priced ourselves out of the market in some ways. A lot of school systems have even tuition throughout all grade levels and they are uh, much higher uh, than what we have uh, listed and so the fee increase is about five dollars and that will go to help buy pencils and paper on all those types of materials that students need so we ask for your consideration on this Do you have any questions or comments I, I have just a few I, I met Dr. Gardenauer and Ms. Wilson I appreciate they, they clarified a lot of things with me um, I, I guess one thing I'm hoping we'll do is approach this logically on a yearly basis. Uh, you know, kind of have a long-term plan. Here's where we're going uh, with this. As I look at this, my concern is that the people outside Carter County, they we're raising it less than 10%. We're going 15% on elementary. We're almost 35% on middle school. Uh, no change on high school, and, and I support. I mean, I support the reasons that we're doing this, I, and, I, and, I, and the different levels. And I know what where we're trying to encourage growth, and I think that's a great thing. But I just think we need to have a logical process that we look at this on a year-to-year -year basis. And I'm not saying we have a goal that we eventually charge people. I think we need to be very fair and balanced in as far as what we can do, as far as offering as long as we can make additional offerings for our own students as well as, well as the tuition students. So that just that's my personal thought. And I think that that's a valid point. I think that that's something that we're going to try to make sure that we do. We need to do this yearly. Look at what the situations are at the building space and, and so forth and just try to make a good decision about, about that. But we do uh, have a good product. Uh, we do have excellent teachers and we do produce great students and we need to make sure that our fees are commensurate with what we're doing. So I'd be very happy to look at those year to year. I know it's always really nice when you have, when you talk to families that um, have chosen to put their child in our system and they feel like it is money well spent. So 
Uh, I did it for years until uh, when uh, Maggie, Abby was in school, and uh, when Maggie was coming along, uh, there was they couldn't take any additional kindergarten students. So, you know, we sold our house and <laughs> moved in the city limits. But it is, um, you know, it, this is important for families. And and but you know, we haven't done this in a very very long time. I agree with Tyler that um, Elizabethan has a wonderful project, a product to offer, but there comes a time <clears throat> when if you add too many students, that becomes a detriment. It seems that, you know, if you add too many students, then the quality starts to go down. So I, I would seriously, seriously suggest that you look at the elementary numbers this year before you offer, you know, open it up again. Because in my experience, the elementary schools are, are pretty full, as it is now. And, and we're, we're about there. We'll, we'll be at capacity no matter uh, you know, what happens with the number of spaces we have available. But uh, you know, we have regulations that dictate the numbers in the classroom. So mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that comment. And we'll be watching it for sure. And what are your fees? Um, are those for? Just the tuition paying students, or this for all students? Uh, the fees are for all students. Uh, yeah. all students do we pay. collect that each year? We do. I mean, it's pretty well paid in. We, everybody pays it. Well, I say everybody pays. You're not it. writing your twenty dollar check there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, um, it seems like that's not one that we often go after, and collect and. But I'm just curious. I have parents who ask me what it's for and and that sort of thing. And, we, in the we past, do, uh, we do use those those fees go right into construction materials, supplies, and those types of things. And we do make every effort to collect uh, that money from parents. Yeah. yeah, I mean it is inexpensive, it, you know, relatively speaking. But just curious. When we looked at some of the fee structures from other places, a lot of the, uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to pick on Science Hill, but we were looking at some, and Dobbins Bennett, but we were looking at some of the fee structures for science classes <clears throat> and some of the robotics classes and so forth. And we've managed to keep our fees in line. You know, they had, I won't call, and Tyler probably knows, but Dobbins Bennett, they may have a list of 35 classes at the high school that require extra fees just to take that class to buy materials and, and that type of thing. And we've done pretty well with charging what we're charging, but you know, I think that as Mr. Fleming here has said, we need to look at it on a year to year because things are not getting cheaper. You know, they, it's right. requiring a lot. Uh, it's about a dime a day. I just wondered. If yeah, it's, yes. that, it's definitely reasonable. <clears throat> I, I had the same thought you did. I, you know, of course, I, there's the Good Samaritan side of me that I always want to say, why don't we go to that just to just have a voluntary donation for family? You know, you make a donation instead of saying this is the fee structure. Of of course, we probably go broke, but, but <laughs> <laughs> just a, just a thought. It, it's, you voluntarily, it pay, you no voluntarily pay your taxes too, huh? Right. <laughs> I thought that earlier this like week. This is <laughs> a good week for that. Right. Okay. All right. With all the windfall we had this week in the city, we uh, <laughs> get some help there. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, item on the floor is approve adjusting the ETS tuition and fee schedules for the 2015-2016 school year. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Last item, approve textbooks for the 2015-2016 school year in the area of mathematics. Can I get a motion to approve? So I have a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Van Hus. our last meeting where you gave us blanket approval to uh, meet the, the, the textbook committee state report deadline. Uh, we have been able to have a textbook committee meeting and it went extremely well. Uh, you never know when you get five different locations, you know, together, you know, exactly what, what you're going to get from that. But things really fell into line uh, the junior high and high school both had settled on and preferred the the same publication for those. So the math curriculum six sixth grade through your algebra one, algebra two, and geometry will all be the same the same publisher. Uh, and in the elementary schools, all three 
agreed to the exact same text as well. These, uh, these are uh, consumable textbooks, so each year they will send us a new one, uh, which you know is something we've never had before. Um, again, all of these are approved items. The only there are what the committee asked for at the high school was to focus our textbook money on the new materials for the tested subjects, Algebra One, Algebra Two, and Geometry. However, we just purchased te math textbooks about three years ago. So the upper level courses, uh, pre-calculus, trigonometry, problem stats, and calculus, those are typically smaller size classes. And just to be honest, those it seems like children in those classes tend to take care of their materials better. So those books, in a lot of ways, are almost brand new. Uh, again, they're small class sizes. I think we have around 60 of each of those. And so if we offer uh, one section each semester, you essentially can get, get by with 30. So numbers weren't an issue. They felt like they were in good enough shape to make it through this next adoption. So if you approve the, the selections for today, there will be new adoptions for K through, again, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. The upper level, we will send a request to the state for a waiver to continue to use those materials. And when I spoke with Monty Wilson, who is the director of this department with the State, of Edu the state Department of Education, <laughs> there are several school systems doing exactly what we're doing, especially with these upper level textbooks. You know, the higher order thinking, uh, all of these things that are really coming into focus now are already in place in these higher level math courses. Those There's teachers, no EOC in any of those courses, so I mean, we don't no, have sir. to worry about our text reflecting what might be the change in the testing process or anything like that. That is correct. The, these are not tested subjects. These teachers, uh, you know, with, with the student demographic that takes, this, that, that, that takes these courses, there's already so much supplementary material that the teacher provides already. So, you know, if there is a change in standards, you know, 18 months from now, they're more than ready, willing, and able to supplement if for some reason these texts, you know, there were whole here or there. And so that's all included <coughs> in the waiver letter that the high school textbook committee put together, and I will be, if, if the board approves this, that I'll be sending off for their consideration. So um, that's kind of the thought process. Again, uh, consumable textbooks through uh, through eighth grade. I don't know the algebra one, algebra that, that may be consumable as well. Those may be consumable. Again, we've never never gone that route before. Are the elementary schools pretty much on board with the same programs as well? Yeah, it's a different it's a different publisher mm -hmm. for K five, but they all three had the same had the same thought process. Uh, one school was kind of teetering back and forth between two, mm -hmm. saw benefits to two different publishers. The other two were sold this way, and the other said, hey, we're fine. These are, these are both great texts. We have no problem going that route. So, again, that's unusual. So, so we feel very comfortable moving forward. This will give our teachers the one tool to use to be able to meet the standard changes that come down the you know, in the next 18 months when they do modify standards. The positive to using a consumable textbook is should anything change in the next 18 months, they have agreed to realign all of the documentation to reflect that. So. I'm on the floor. Approved textbooks for the 2015-2016 school year in the area of mathematics. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Um, we are going to be having a workshop Monday, April 20th at 6.30, and our next regularly scheduled board meeting will be held Thursday, May 21st, 2015, 6.30, in the Matt Peters <laughs> boardroom. Don't forget, we have lots of things going on in the schools, honors days, uh, again, it's got graduation coming up, we have uh, lots of programs, so you have no reason to not get out and enjoy life. So. Thank you all very much. Can do I get a motion? Do oh, we need yes. to do anything on telemedicine formally? Oh. We, <clears throat> before we go, you made a motion and it was approved to move forward with that. So, uh, would it be appropriate to table that if 
Well, we've already done it, which has gone through a motion. So what would be the next, our next step? We could put it on for next month uh, after if published. anyone wants to review that. We could put it on probably for next a, month. Probably and we, a good idea. Uh, I think so, too. If, if, if you're going to be talking to other companies, would you like, rather have two months to? Well, we'll see if we can make any contact with, okay. with anyone and uh, see if that's going to be a viable option for us. And I'll try to communicate that with you all. And then maybe next month we'll put a resolution to dissolve that. We we were very smart to con consult our attorney before, before moving forward. I didn't know so, if we were under any obligation since we voted to do something. And then, yeah, I think it's, that's smart. Let's go ahead and we'll dissolve that and start the process of looking for another group. And something else that came up in one of our work sessions that I'd like to start thinking about and discussing is, Dr. May's thoughts on the possible reconfiguring, reconfiguring elementary schools down the road, or at least studying that. Mm -hmm. And I hate to put that in the lap of a brand new superintendent right off the bat, but just you know, kind of start gathering some thoughts on that. I thought that was right. Tra that that's fine. Transportation is our issue there. Absolutely. But Absolutely. I, I think that that is well worth looking at. And, and it may be a dead. No, nope. maybe I it, think that that's, look, but at least look into it. it. We we would be happy to do that and. Uh, you know, I don't know if, if you all want to look at a, a study to see a feasibility study on that. We could bring a group to do that, or if you'd rather us look at that. I mean, we have, I can tell Mr. Hutchins is sitting back there, but we have talked about that. Uh, uh, he, he's covering his face, but we have talked about that several times, just trying to think, figure out the logistics. It would, it would increase our costs as far as the amount of buses that we'd have to have. And, but I, we have always, Dr. Mays brought that up before, and we've always thought that that would be a, a really neat deal uh, if we could really look at it and afford to do it because it does, uh, other systems small like ours have done that, and I think that it's uh, it's great if you walk into a K, K through one or pre-K through one school and everything in that school is focused on that level of student. And... Uh, you have a principal that's an expert in that area, and so there, there's a lot of benefit. So, uh, but we'll be happy to look at that again. And you know, if we want to do a feasibility study, we can try to. I go just out don't want to forget it. about. You know, we may say no. Are uh, you talking about certain grade levels, like mm -hmm. K one two at one school three? Well, just studying where we are, not just necessarily studying. saying that, but yeah. Well, I can tell you the last few years of my teaching career, I taught in a building where it was all fifth grade. The whole school was fifth grade. And there were a lot of positive things to it, but there were also a lot of negatives as well. <laughs> and that's yeah, all I'll say yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second. Second. Thank second. you, guys. Before I get something.